This presentation is brought to you by the Colorado Neurological Institute Movement Disorder Center. My name is Dr. Rajiv Kumar and I am the Medical Director of the Colorado Neurological Institute Movement Disorder Center. There are a large number of non-motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease. This presentation will focus on cognitive and mood difficulties as Parkinson's disease progresses. Non-motor symptoms can often be a major source of disability and in fact dementia or cognitive impairment can be the greatest determinant of disability and quality of life as the disease progresses. Depression is remarkably common in patients with Parkinson's disease and will affect up to 50% of patients at some point in their disease. Depression is a strong contributor to reduced quality of life and aggressive treatment can improve this. Symptoms include fatigue, weight gain or weight loss due to an increase or decrease in appetite, sadness, and reduced concentration. Progressive degeneration of different brain systems, particularly those affecting the norepinephrine and serotonin systems, combined with the disability associated with Parkinson's disease, are strong contributors to the cause of depression. There are several effective treatments for depression including psychotherapy and medication. Exercise is also very helpful as it has been shown to improve both fatigue and mood in addition to its effect on motor symptoms. There have been controlled trials of various antidepressants in patients with Parkinson's disease demonstrating significant improvement. These antidepressants include paroxetine, which is an example of a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, venlafaxine, which is an example of a serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, and nortriptyline, which is a tricyclic antidepressant. Interestingly, the dopamine agonist pramipexol has also been shown to improve depression in addition to its effect on motor symptoms. As with depression, anxiety is remarkably common in Parkinson's disease. It may exist by itself or may be seen in combination with depression. Anxiety can be chronic and persistent, but in patients with non-motor fluctuations, it is often worsened during the medication off state when there is worsening of motor symptoms as well. A variety of medications, including benzodiazepines or Valium-type medications, in addition to antidepressants, may be helpful. Psychotherapy and learning anxiety reduction techniques can also be useful. Apathy refers to lack of motivation or reduced interest in activity and is commonly seen in Parkinson's disease. It is important to determine whether or not apathy is present by itself or as a symptom of depression. If depression is present, treating the underlying depression may be helpful. Specific treatments for apathy in Parkinson's disease otherwise have not been fully developed. Behavioral interventions or treatment with stimulants or dopamine agonists may be helpful based on the utility of these treatments in other diseases where apathy is present. Impulse control disorder refers to excessive or inappropriate interest in certain activities. These inappropriate interests may include pathologic gambling, excessive interest in certain hobbies, hypersexuality, binge eating, compulsive shopping, or internet addiction. Usually these problems are caused by the use of dopamine agonist medication such as pramipexol, rapinerol, or reticotine. Often the patient may have poor awareness of the inappropriateness and excessive nature of these activities and the caregiver or spouse may be the most aware of these problems. Impulse control disorder may affect up to 17 percent of patients treated with dopamine agonists. Risk factors include being male, younger in age, unmarried, and having a personal or family history of drug or alcohol use. Usually the dopamine agonist dose must be reduced and often the medication needs to be completely stopped in order to improve these symptoms. A small percentage of patients may have difficulty completely withdrawing from dopamine agonists and this is referred to as dopamine agonist withdrawal syndrome. Changes in cognition may be evident even in patients with early mild Parkinson's disease. Cognitive impairment may worsen further with increasing age and increasing duration of disease. 
The earliest changes seen include slowness of mental processing, referred to as bradyphrenia, problems with working memory, including storing and processing information, and reduction in executive functioning, which may be apparent by difficulty with multitasking. Processing of visual-spatial information may also be affected relatively early in the disease. This can contribute to bradykinesia or reduced amplitude of movements as perception of distances are affected. Dementia is the greatest source of disability in advanced Parkinson's disease and unfortunately is the most common cause of nursing home placement. The presence of dementia significantly increases mortality. After a duration of 15 years of Parkinson's disease, about 50% of patients may become demented. This increases to 80% of patients after 20 years of disease. Hallucinations, poor response to levodopa, and increased severity of motor symptoms are associated with dementia. If dementia and Parkinsonism occur within one year of each other, this is referred to as dementia with Lewy bodies. If dementia and Parkinsonism occur within one year of each other, this is referred to as dementia with Lewy bodies. On the other hand, if Parkinsonism precedes the development of cognitive impairment by several years, the dementia is referred to as Parkinson's disease dementia. For patients who develop dementia, it can be helpful to simplify the anti-Parkinson drug regimen and treat predominantly with levodopa. For its relative anti-Parkinson effect, levodopa is the best tolerated anti-Parkinson medication and has less tendency to produce drug-induced psychosis. Behavioral treatment, such as modifying the environment and sticking to a routine, can also be helpful. Rivastigmine, a cholinesterase inhibitor, has been approved for treatment of dementia associated with Parkinson's disease. Another cholinesterase inhibitor, Dinepazil, has also been shown in smaller clinical trials to be helpful in modestly improving cognition in Parkinson's disease dementia. There is somewhat mixed data on the use of memantine, suggesting that this medication might be helpful in some patients with Parkinson's disease dementia as well. Treatment of associated behavioral problems, such as anxiety, agitation, and hallucinations, is also important since these behavioral symptoms may at times be more problematic than the cognitive impairment. Psychosis refers to the presence of hallucinations or delusions. Delusions are fixed abnormal thoughts and can often manifest as paranoia, which is an abnormal fear of others trying to do harm. Patients may also have delusions of infidelity or that others are trying to steal their belongings. Hallucinations in Parkinson's disease patients are typically visual hallucinations where the patient sees people, animals, or things that are unreal. Typically, these begin as a sense of a presence or a person or thing in the periphery of vision, and this disappears once the patient attends to that area around them. As hallucinations become more severe, the patient may see formed objects or people, but still retain insight that these are unreal. The hallucinations become quite troublesome when they are persistent and the patient loses insight that these people or things are not real. Other forms of hallucinations, such as auditory hallucinations, are uncommon in Parkinson's disease. Delusions and hallucinations are typically a manifestation of Parkinson's disease dementia. When they occur in patients who are not yet demented, they are a sign that cortical pathology is accumulating, which will eventually result in dementia. Anti-Parkinson medication worsens hallucinations and delusions. As a result, the medication regimen is typically simplified with levodopa used as primary treatment and other secondary medications, such as anticholinergics, amantadine, and dopamine agonist, reduced or dropped if possible. If simplification of the medication regimen does not improve psychosis or results in unacceptable worsening of motor symptoms, antipsychotics may be needed. Generally, only the atypical antipsychotics quetiapine and clozapine are used, as many of the other antipsychotics substantially worsen motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Until recently, the extent and importance of non-motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease was largely unrecognized. 
Non-motor symptoms can cause significant disability, separate from the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease, and there are a number of effective therapies which can be implemented to improve non-motor symptoms, which can, as a result, improve quality of life. It's important to discuss these problems with your neurologist in order to best implement treatment for these problems, and other members of your healthcare team may need to also be engaged to best manage these symptoms. I hope that you have found this educational video to be helpful and will tune in for subsequent presentations as part of this educational video series.